Okay, so we're carrying on with this chat, but we have to do it in bites. Oh, we'd like a big wall board, really, so that I can show you on a, a whiteboard. Okay, so we have, by 14, the 1440s, we have the chapel masonry box deep in the palazzo. We have imported a baton. I like to call these people baton, batons. I hope they don't mind. A baton to me is someone who comes with a magnificent energy and DNA, baby. It's in the DNA, all of this stuff. Oh, and we thought a few years ago that the DNA was filled with junk. Oh, well, we know a lot of things, don't we? Anyway, so in the 1440s, we have Cosimo's reign over Florence. We have the chapel built. We have in that chapel regular meetings of Ficino, and we have Ficino's Academy, which we will come to in a moment. Just to say a little bit about the chapel. If you go to the chapel, it's very small, it's shockingly small. And the first thing, well, different people see different things, but the first thing I saw was, of course, the wonderful Gozzoli, wonderful wall. Now, his... The painting on this wall is just miraculous. And it is the story of the unorthodox journey to and from love that Cosimo believed in. It is about the devotion of the heart. I am not, I'm not having a go at church history, I'm not, but the papal authorities at the time ruled on many, many cans. Forgive me. Ego, power, power mongering, control. Cosimo adored love, whatever you want to think of as love. And he was a mouthpiece for love. And underneath the Renaissance is this basis. He he met with Ficino and his team in this contemplative space. Now, they practiced something, I don't know whether they called it the way, but it has been called the way. And we'll look at the chapel in a while, but on the walls, there is a very specific story of the way. And the chapel fresco, remember, Gopsoli was a jeweler. So his attention to detail is astounding. And actually, if you look at a book, it was published originally by Daunton Kunzelman, uh, a, a big book. It's a bit like a coffee table book, but it is put together by the curator and renovator of that chapel in the 90s, called Signora Dottore Cristina Acidini Lucina. And she's a fabulous, passionate woman. And it was her passion that brought about the this wonderful, wonderful chapel restoration. And what she's done, if you can imagine that somebody has taken wonderful photographs in the, in the minutiae of this wonderful chapel, and, you can, and, and, and they've pasted it in quite a big book, so you can see the detail that you can't always see when you're there standing in the flesh. You can see right at the top, which you can't see without little binoculars very well when you're in the chapel. And this chapel shows you through the got first through the got I feel through the Gopsoli fresco the return of the beloved to the planet. And beneath that wonderful, rushing, nearly late beloved on a white charger coming out of the tower at the top of this fresco in some distant place, you know, over the hills and far away. He's coming out of a tower, which is the representative of the Magdalene. She is the tower. She's the Magdalada of the flock. I think if you look at Micah, I think it's 4-8. Um, she's, the, the, she's the guardian of the flock. And if you look at, you know, wonderful Pisa with the baptistry and then the arms of this great church and just by the Christ's right arm, I suppose. Depends where you're looking at it. By the right arm is that tower, which has been leaning. What a surprise, the Magdalene's leaning. At the right, 
at his right hand is Mary Magdalene. And she, I'm really giving away all the secrets, she is coming. She has come already out of this tower, this wonderful white fortress. And he is there galloping last. He is last, Yeshua, beloved Yeshua. And she is just below, right up here in this chapel. She is on a white stallion and she's gorgeous and she's surrounded by young men. What a surprise. And, and remember, you know, she's feminine, she's feisty, she's lovely. She is some sort of closely connected person to Yeshua, the beloved. And she is chatting to her young men. It is fabulous. And then there is the road down on this Gotswadi fresco, and the road down shows you some of the things that can go wrong if you take the wrong fork. More of that later. And it shows you the whole procession of the Compagnia dei Magi, the company of the star, who are walking to the New Jerusalem. Now, this is big stuff. Please, you know, somebody pick this up. I've been doing this since 2005 and I'm a bit tired. I'd like somebody to listen because in the procession you see the Magi. And we're going to do more of this in two seconds. But the procession is made up of the members of the Compagnia dei Magi. Now the Compagnia dei Magi were the guild, the big guild, and they were Cosimo's people, and after him, Lorenzo. Now, just a little word about Lorenzo. In this Gozzoli fresco, starting at the top with the return of the beloved, and coming down to this great procession of all the people of Florence at the time, you see a very young uh, Lorenzo, who is, of course... Cosimo's grandson. It's sort of Mr. Generation. And you see, we will identify some of the people in this procession soon, but when that, I nearly said photograph, when that <clears throat> great portrait was made of all the members of the, of the Compagnie dei Maggi, it showed you all the people who were running Florence. And of course, Lorenzo will come to run Florence. And the Compagnia, Compagnia, Nia, the um, Magi, is a guild which it is really the Medici's liege men. They run Florence, they know exactly what's going on in Florence, the Medici spies are everywhere in Florence, and they are running it. Now, Ficino has an academy which is about the Magi also. And so I'm just weaving for you at the start. I'd like you to read the paper, please, because it's quite hard to do all this without visual aids. The Compagnia dei Maggi are running Florence. In the middle of it is Cosimo. Soon Lorenzo will take over. Ficino is here weaving his academy, which meets every night, in his home, which at the time was behind Santa Maria Novella, the new Mary who my sweetheart is Mary Magdalene. Santa Maria Novella, the new Mary. Behind that wonderful, I want to say, oh gosh, it is a massive, massive, massive institution. Behind there lives Ficino. And every, say, Monday night, they all meet together. You go by invitation only. I think it has been, his house is demolished, and it is now the bus station and the train station. So there we are every Monday night with Ficino, by invitation. And he teaches them. He teaches them mysteries that Yeshua taught, and which haven't really got to many people yet. They are in the Pistis Sophia, the many extant, the three extant, as we know of at the moment, versions of the Pistis Sophia. All Yeshua's, or Jesus, all Yeshua's instructions to his disciple, which disciples, which were private, are in the Pistis Sophia, and more about that later. Okay, so we have Ficino and we have Cosimo, a team. We have the meeting in this wonderful um, Palazzo Cube, 
every week also, as well as the, as well as the Academy. We have stars everywhere, the Compagnia dei Maggi, the Company of the Star, men who meet, who meet in all the legal matters to do with Florence. We have the Academy of the Magi, Ficino teaching the mysteries of Yeshua and teaching focus, teaching about the underpinnings that Plato brought in about love, the absolutes which go on somewhere else out here in our energy fields that are the perfected versions of uh, our qualities, love, beauty, truth, goodness, ah, all those things. He's teaching that. Plato brought them in before Yeshua came. He was a, a forerunner of, of this great challenge, really. And Ficino is teaching discipline. He is teaching love above everything else. He is teaching Lorenzo. He is teaching this young boy, this young grandson of Cosimo, to be Plato's philosopher king. He is teaching this man about love, and he's teaching this young man as a very young boy. And he, and Gozzoli has made, as well as putting Lorenzo at about 12 in the procession of all the compagnia, uh, led by Cosimo, a funny looking, slightly funny looking Cosimo, more later in the procession, in the fresco, but he, Gozzoli, is also showing Lorenzo as the young prince. He is this wonderful young Caspar, who is one of the Magi. More about that later. Now, I just before I end this, I'm trying to make them short, and it's difficult, but I want to just mention to you, tell you about Lorenzo. Lorenzo was an extraordinary man. He was said to be very ugly. I find him very beautiful. He is beautiful in his majestic way, you know, with his lovely big nose, ski run nose, and his wonderful wide, wide face, and big face, and big, big, big chiseled um, here, massive, massive chiseled cheekbones. And, you know, he had no sense of smell, bless him. Imagine a life where you can't taste and you can't smell. He loved women. Of course he did. Why should he not? He loved beauty. Um, and he famously did not go to his wedding. Just get that, guys. And ladies always, of course. He didn't go to his wedding. Why? Because his wife had been chosen for him politically. He was a poor, and unfortunately, sadly, he didn't turn up at his wedding because he was obliged to marry the Orsino lady from uh, Rome. She was Clarice Orsino and she was a Roman. The Florentines didn't really like the Romans very much, they were military. And he had to marry her as a political move. And he didn't go to the wedding, he sent an ambassador for him because his heart couldn't do it. So that's the man you're facing. Lorenzo was a great statesman. I don't know how far. I am not a cruel woman. I hope to have compassion as one of the most important things in my life. So for me, uh, he was a statesman. He was charismatic. He was very good at mending walls, building bridges. He was very, very firmly interested in being egalitarian. He believed in the brotherhood of man the love of God, the love of the beloved, the love of love, and the brotherhood of man. And he was a massive sponsor. You know, there aren't many sponsors about in our contemporary world, arguably. He sponsored all of that wonderful team that the magnetics of Ficino, of Cosimo, excuse me, Cosimo first, Ficino next, the team of contemplators bringing in this high frequency on Monday nights behind the bus station, inside the masonry boxes. Lorenzo brings all of that together. He brings the magnificent team. He sponsors Botticelli. He sponsors Michelangelo. He brings in this wonderful team of workers, continues along the line from his grandfather, and more about that later. And he was a wonderful horseman. He was, a, he was great at the joust. He was courageous. He didn't do things that he wouldn't expect somebody else to do. And so we are here 
in this wonderful point of blossoming in the Medici energy lands, in the Medici energy fields. And we have one more man. Now, shockingly, souls sometimes come in pairs. And they come, they are the same soul. I know this. They come together, one grounding and one continuing a little bit. Now, a little while after Ficino's birth, another person was born. Wonderful. Count Giovanni Pico della Mirandola. We shall call him Pico. He is magnificent. He's six feet tall. He has hair the colour of wheat. Poof, don't show me a man who is brilliantly clever and has, you know, looks wonderful and has, the, has hair the colour of wheat. And he was loved. He was loved by a lot of people. And he was spectacular. Give him a poem, he scans it and he can recite it in minutes. He is noted for his wonderful, wonderful qualities. And he is a brilliant scholar. And he brings into this team a baton. He brings the Kabbalah. Now this is serious, serious stuff. Please will somebody listen. Because he brings in original, oh I hope I'm alright with this with people, but he brings in the Kabbalah, that wonderful mystical original Jewishness, Judaism. He speaks that wonderful original high Jewish. And in the Kabbalah, he brings the love of the Jewish people. He's clever. He unites it in. So we have his baton. We have the magic of the Kabbalah. There is magic in the Kabbalah. Go to the Kabbalists even now in Jerusalem, and ask them. He brings into this chapel the ceilings of which show you the rose, the beloved feminine, the Magdalene, the high female, the high female of, of uh, Yeshua's mother. He brings high feminine of Yeshua's mother he brings together, and the Medici bring together in that chapel, the Christian heart, the real, original Christian love message, before it was mutilated and aggressively made into something else after the Nicene lot in um, 325, and all the legalism that came in. All of these people come together with their various baton, and they meet with the ceilings and the rose and the wedding rings and the marriage with the beloved the medici rings of marriage to the beloved the mystical element of christian of the christian the ancient christian marriage of love and the ceilings diagonally match the floor and the floors particularly the first floor shows a wonderful mandala I'll have to ask you to look. I can't show you at the moment. You can see in Invisible Italy, you can see this floor quickly. But, and we're going to talk about it in the next, in the fourth video. But we see a mandala which is very clearly about the way, the way the pilgrim must go up into the high altar, which is tiny, in this wonderful masonry box. And this high altar has a painting on it. It is a painting made by Fra Lippo Lippi, it is a fascinating painting which is filled with triangles because it is about the Trinity and it is about the process of trinita, trinitization. I can't say it, trinitization. Because big things happen when they happen in threes. The Medici knew about this. They downloaded this information. It is in Egypt. Look at how the first Egyptians made those wonderful pyramids. pyramids they made them with the process of triangulization. And in Dante's Commedia, his Divine Comedy, Dante goes through into paradise, into higher frequency knowledge. He goes through, through the Trinity.